In this video about schemas, we will build a schema for the purchase order, a sample purchase order. I went to Google and I did a search on XML purchase order, and that brought me to the uh, W3Org site, and they have a good example of an XML purchase order here. So rather than reinventing uh, the wheel, what we're going to do is actually make this like a, a lab assignment where we're going to take this specific purchase order and encode it into the BizTalk uh, graphical user interface for schemas. So the first thing we need to do is go to Visual Studio and open a new project. So we're going to do File, New Project. Of course on the left side you want to click BizTalk. If you don't see the BizTalk projects here, that usually means that uh, you installed Visual Studio after you installed BizTalk and there are some little jobs you can run that will set that up properly. So we want to create an empty BizTalk server project and I will call it uh, so I'll call it PO purchase order schemas and I'm going to put all my projects related to this video under my default directory under my my documents but then after that I'm going to use uh, BT 2006 intro just to keep these projects separate from all my other projects okay so the project was created so we then go to the project and we right click and we're going to choose add and this is actually kind of not showing on my video right now let's see if we do it over here it might show it better normally I would just come over here and say right click and then use the pop-up menus but it was off of the video screen so here I'm going to choose Okay, we can't use this screen because it doesn't have the biz, biz talk scheme on here. So I'm going to do right click again, add new file, and I'm going to click uh, new item. This is the screen we really needed. So now it says biz talk project items. You can add orchestrations, maps, pipelines, or schemas. And so there's four different choices for schemas. If you're going to build your own, you just pick schema here, and then we'll call this PO schema. The first thing I always do is change the root element here. I make it the same name as my XSD file. So if over here I have PO schema.xsd, I'll put PO schema here. And the second thing you need to do then is give it a namespace. So we do that down here in the properties. I always like my properties sorted A to Z. And then scroll down to actually click on the word schema here first. This is the root element, but the properties are actually different between the root element other elements and then the schema itself. So in the schema itself we want to come down here and by default look what it does. It takes, uh, puts HTTP and puts your project name dot PO schema. So for instance what I might want to do is change that, put my domain name in here biztalktraining.com slash PO schemas. That way I know it's going to be unique across the whole world because no one else would put my domain name in their schema namespace. Okay, then we're going to come over here and start adding elements and attributes. So let's go back and look at our sample data from the uh, W3Org website. And okay, notice they did have a root element called purchase order. So I guess if I want to try to conform to them, I really need to make this then uh, purchase order. Notice they're using sort of a camel case. They're starting with a lowercase letter and then they're going to uppercase letters for different words. And so let's rename my file as well. Purchase order .xsd. And then now we'll also rename I'm sorry I had that off the screen. What I did is renamed right here. And then I also want to go back to my schemas and see it doesn't rename your namespace now when you change your project name. So here uh, we want to change that now to purchase purchase order. No, I'm sorry. It was the project name, PO schemas, and then they had dot the name of the root element. Of course, you can make it anything you want, but you should have some consistency here. 
So I'm trying to be consistent with the way that BizTalk does it by default. Okay, now we want to add a attribute here called order date, and of course it's going to be a date. So we're going to right click insert a child field attribute, call it order date. And as you notice as we type over here on the left, and as we click different things on the left, it highlights in gray here in this uh, XSD syntax that it's building. And over here on the right now we have the attributes or the properties for that. And so we want to change the data type from a string, which is the default, to a date or a date time. It looks like they just have a date over here. There's no time in that field. And then under purchase order, we want to have an element called ship to. Okay, so we're going to do right click here, insert element, ship to. And then it's going to have an attribute called country. You know, there's something funny here. It's not letting me insert. Oh, okay. So this is a, a thing about BizTalk. Uh, I guess it still confuses me. Uh, in regular XML par parlance, we did add an element over here. But in BizTalk, they also have this concept of something called a record. So if you want to have an element that has other children under it, you shouldn't use element here. You should use record. So I actually have to delete that and then come back and add it again. This time I'm going to say child record ship to. And now I notice it puts the plus sign there. And now we can right click insert child attribute, which was called country. Back to the le um, back to our model here. Uh, you could put a restriction on this if you only worked with like Canada and US. You could actually put a restriction where you could limit the legal values of country to only two or three values. So after ship to, we now need name, street, city, state, zip. Those will all be elements. Now, they're elements because they don't have any sub-elements under them. Otherwise, it would have to be a record. So child field element. And again, what do they call it? Name. These are all lowercase. Name, street, city, state, zip. Notice the icons over here we have so far. So a record is like the lines going across the, the icon. Attributes are an et sign, which is from the XPath syntax. Elements kind of look like little tags, like the less than, greater than sign. So after we add name here, we need to add street, street city, state, zip. Insert child node, street. Insert child element, city, state, zip. Now we ask, we have to ask, like, do we want to make zip code numeric or not? Well, they don't tell us if they put dash and if they put nine character zip codes or not. So we'll leave it set to uh, just five digits right now. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is add the bill to address, which is right here. And notice it also has name, street, city, state, zip. We'll talk in another video about how you can actually share information, so create structures called address and then you can have two addresses in the same schema. For right now I'm just going to go off the video and I'm going to repeat what I did a few minutes ago. I'm going to add a record called bill to and I'm simply going to add the same information here. Okay I've added this information and you can see here I actually made a mistake. I put bill to at the top level and it really needs to be under purchase order like the same level as ship to. So what I could do here is actually move it like that. Now I have it under ship to. So now I'm going to drag it up here and put it under purchase order. You can see how the mouse kind of changes there. Now it's in the correct position. And so I can collapse these two and now I can continue on with the next element. Another thing you need to consider is, is a person only going to have one address or two addresses? One, I mean one ship to and one build to? If so, what you want to do is come over here to the properties and you want to change max occurs to one and minimum occurs. In other words, do they have to have a ship to address? I would say yes. So I'm, I'm guessing that in this schema we have to have a minimum of one address, one ship to, and a maximum of one ship to. And the same thing with the bill to. 
Okay, now we'll go back to our model here, and we need a comment, which is just going to be text. So we come up here, insert child element comment. The next thing we're going to add is a group called items. And you notice that items will have multiple item elements in it. So since it's going to have child elements, it needs to be a rec what BizTalk calls a record. So we come up here, insert a record called items, plural. And then under that, we right click, insert another record called item. And the reason we put a record there is that item itself is going to have sub elements here. So item will have an attribute called part number. Let's see if I spelled it the same. Yeah. And then I need product name as an element. Let me move this over a little bit. The next element is quantity. We'll come back and set that as numeric in just a second. And then US price. I just pasted that in there. And then another comment. Let's just audit that, make sure we got everything. So we got part num, product name, quantity, price, and comment. So quantity we know needs to probably be an integer not a decimal. So we come over here and we select integer. Now notice there are two items on here. One is int and the other is integer. And the difference is that um, I believe integer is a generic XML schema term whereas int is a specific C sharp like an int 32. So we're just going to pick integer for now. The price needs to be like a money or a decimal field. So we're going to go up here and select decimal. And the next thing we have to look is our one to minis. So how we know that there can be many item elements in an items element. So item singular, we need to put a max occurs of, uh, well, we don't know how many items there are. So let's assume there's no limit. An order could have thousands of items on it. And if you're going to have, if you're going to send us a purchase order, you have to send us at least one item, or else there's no point in the purchase order. However, items itself, the plural, should be uh, occurs exactly one time, so a max of one and a minimum of one. And then within item, like part num could only occur, well, attributes can always occur only one time. So you can actually say whether it's required or optional here. So I would say that's going to be required. Product name, what I'm suggesting is you just come here on each one of these, and if it's required, you put a one and a one. So we have to have at least one product name, but no more than one product name. Same thing for quantity. So we put a one and a one. Price, one and a one. And a comment, I would say, could be optional. So a maximum of one comment, but a minimum of zero. So at this point, we've pretty much completed our schema. Uh, just to show you again, you collapse these things. You can click on Ship To. And notice how it highlights that in gray. Click on Build To. It highlights that area. Click on Item. Highlights the entire group. Or you can click on something like Quantity, and it just highlights that one specific element. So at this point, we'll just save the uh, schema. And to make sure we didn't make any mistakes, I'll do a build here. And simply building the .NET project. Look at the bottom line here. It says build succeeded. Usually on a schema you don't have many errors unless it's uh, maybe a reference to another schema that's uh, messed up. So this will conclude this video and the next video will show you how you can um, actually create dummy data and how you can validate data using this schema. All from within Visual Studio.